I've had a lot of interest in this turning. I call it the Great Illusion. It was a lot of fun and I appreciate everyone watching it and commenting on it. And if you haven't seen this, I'll put a link in the description for this video. So, I've also had a lot of requests for the dimensions and the angles and the geometry. I think I have a way to show that without making it boring for everybody because not everybody wants to see the dimensions and angles and they just want to see the turning itself and I understand that. So this is what I'll be making today. You can see it resembles the other one in a lot of ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about the dimensions a lot or the angles while I'm building this but when this is through when I show you the photos of this then I'll have a little more of the video showing the dimensions, the angles, and why they are what they are. So if you're not interested in all of that geometry and dimensions, you don't have to watch that. So as soon as I show the photos here, then I'll have that last little section on cutting these pieces and how to measure them. So let's get going and make this one. One very important thing is to get this angle absolutely perfect. Off of this blade, if you come off 90, which this is, and come down 30 degrees from, from 90, that's what you need. That's a 30 degree angle. Here are the pieces. And as soon as they go together and the ends line up and they don't hang over and it closes up, then you have it. The best way to do it is take some oversized scraps. and cut those and that actually closes up pretty nice if I can hold it still right there that's all nice and tight so I press this set up good and I'll go ahead and cut them all the little ones are cut I'm going to take the stock and make the next size up So I just cut all of the mid-sized parallelograms that I need. It's still set up the same way. This is something to uh, kind of pay attention to and remember. When you cut the trapezoids, you just flip that same piece over and use the same stop. So going this direction makes the parallelogram. If you turn it over, you're going to make the trapezoid. I have all the pieces cut and I'm ready to glue them all together. And that's for what I'm making today. It's not exactly like what I did a couple weeks ago. If I was making that one, I would need to make six stars. And for the background, I've chosen a much darker wood. So that needs 36 of these little parallelograms. They're cut exactly the same. I'll go ahead and cut one and then we'll get over to the bench and I'll show you how I glue them together. Alright, I've got them all lined up. I've double checked it. I can see a cherry beam going here and here. A maple coming down here and connecting and going across that way and connecting. And then we have an oak going across this way and that way. I'm going to do a little different method of gluing that I did on the other one. I, I think we're all in learning stages. I'm going to try to learn a better way than what I did the last time. So, here we go. Okay, I 
I would like to be able to just drop a rubber band on here, but I'm just afraid it's going to fly away. So, just going to put this on for a second. Now I can slip a rubber band on it. There. We. Now I'm just going to squish it around and get them to line up. Well, this piece dries, I'll glue a star together. And I'm doing this different than what I've done in the past. And I'll, I'll show you what I did. In the past, I would glue them in halves. I decided to go ahead and try one in one piece, or all six pieces glued together. It worked. It's quicker, and uh, if it's quicker and it works, that's a good way to do it. So same same idea. I just kind of slide these around, get them fairly close. Make sure the glue's squeezed like that. This I can actually get a rubber band around. Like that. And we'll put a couple on it. Like so. Now, as long as I have time, I'm going to clean that off and then I'll just push it until all the points meet in the middle. Just like that just went together. Maybe that would help if that was there. Alright, so that was much easier. Like I said earlier, I may have done it the other way and it worked, but if I can improve on how I do things, I love doing that. It makes my day. These are the pieces to make the post. If I was going to put post around that center section, I don't plan on doing it here, but I want to show you how I made this. Pretty much made out of the same pieces, except for one, and I'll tell you about that later. But what you want to do is match whatever wood you have here. You want that to look just like that. So I have an oak and an oak, same thing. Cherry and maple, cherry and maple, maple and cherry. It's it's exactly like this, except for this longer piece. Because we're not using this, you have to have the corner connected. I'll tell you more about how I made that, and it's actually very easy if you've gotten this far. Okay, I'm going to glue this together. I'll show you how the stars fit. Then I'll set this stuff aside and we'll finish this one. This is how the stars fit into here, like so and it leaves the perfect shape for this to fit in, like that. And you would do another one of these corners for over here. So on my first one, I glued all the stars together first, and I actually glued this together while they were fitting in the stars. This leaves you a chance to make adjustments if you need them. I don't think that's a bad way to do it either, but the fact that I'm not using stars on this I just went ahead and glued this together just like that. Which we are now going to finish this. I'm setting this aside and make a little slightly different turning than this. So let me get things straightened up and we'll start doing that. I'm gluing on the pieces that go around the outside. It's your standard segments, six per ring.
I'm making three segmented rings here and there's 12 segments per ring and these are pretty standard I didn't think I needed to spend the time showing that I'd rather devote the time to the critical part of this turn I have the main bottom section hot glued to a tenon and it's in my chuck I'm using a Longworth chuck to line the next row of segments up and hold them in place while the glue dries. This is ring number three and when the glue dries we'll be ready to turn. I glued these three rings on this morning. I'm going to use my half inch bowl gouge and just put a shape on there and that's probably it for the day. It's, it's getting late and it's getting hot. About 860 RPM, freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge. I'm going to take one more cut along this edge here, and I think that'll be about it. It certainly cuts nice and smooth. I decided to go ahead and do the inside now. Take a little bit more off. Okay, well I wasn't planning on doing all of this tonight, but I I did and now when get up tomorrow morning, I can sand this and get a finish on it, because it is looking good. I'm all ready to sand, and this should be very easy. I'll start with a 2-inch disc 100 grit, work my way through 400, and on the inside, I'll have the lathe running forward at about 400 RPM. When I do the outside, I'll have it at 400, turning in reverse. So, I'm going to get my dust collector going and show you some of the sand. Well, I was thinking either Wipe-On Poly or the Minwax Polycrylic. I decided to use the Polycrylic, but first I'll put the Minwax water-based sanding sealer on it. So this wood that I'm using right here, this is called Cambia Poplar. And what it is, it's put in an oven and it's roasted. So, my understanding is they roast it, but apparently insects don't like the wood if everything's roasted out of it. And all I do is wipe it on like this. So, probably uh, another coat of the sanding sealer and then maybe two coats of the polycrylic. And it'll look just like this. So, I'll get that done. I'm not going to show you the inside. The outside's a lot easier to watch. <laughs> Can't see much on the inside. Not with my hand in the way. Oh. 
Well, here it is. It is all done, and I think this one is pretty nice as well. Finished 9 inches in diameter. It's 3 and an eighth inches tall. And it got a really nice finish on it. I have two coats of Minwax water-based sandy sealer, two coats of Minwax polyacrylic, and then I used axe abrasive paste on it. So I, I did this one because there was a lot of requests for dimensions for this one. So I sort of tied it all together. I did show how to make these stars even though the attorney today didn't need them. And I showed how to make these corner pieces. And the stars fit in these areas here. So if you look at this, doesn't that look like a 90 degree angle there? That you'd get, you'd run your finger into the end of that? Well no, it just goes straight across. Illusions are so cool to do. I really like them. So you want to make sure, don't forget, if you want all these dimensions, watch after the pictures of this and I'll have a short video showing all of that. And uh, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, by the way, I've been asked many times, why don't you show your face? That's why. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment. I enjoy reading them all, and I do my best to answer them all. If you could share the video around, that would really be great. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And many thanks to all of my current subscribers. I enjoy all types of wood turning. Let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later. So as promised, dimensions and angles. You'll need something to measure accurately with and maybe a calculator. These are the four pieces that you need to make to create that illusion. Before I talk about these, I want to go over the angle one more time. So this represents my wedgie sled. The yellow is the base, this is the lower leg, this is the blade. The way this needs to be set up is off of 90. So this lower leg is rotated 30 degrees off of 90. What I've done in the past is use my protractor and set it along this edge and rotate it 30 degrees off of 90 on your protractor. You'll have exactly what you need. You may need to dial it in, so I showed you that earlier on in the video, how to tweak that in. Mine's been set for a long time and I pinned it in place. I actually have a sled with only one leg on it if I wanted to use it. So let's go ahead and get back to those dimensions and angles. This is the very first piece that I make. It's the smallest. I start with stock that's .7910. After I make that cut, which is 30 degrees, it should measure 0.9133. After making that cut, you make your length. That would be this way. We're talking about a strip of stock that goes out maybe 10, 12 inches long to do these. You make that 0.9133. This will automatically be the same, and so will that. That's all there is to this piece. If for some reason you don't get your stock ripped to the point nine or seven nine one zero, that's okay. Use whatever you come up with, but after you make your first cut, measure it, write that down. You no longer would use this. If for some reason you have point seven five, this will be a new dimension. And I'm telling you what it is off of here. It's the exact same process. Make your cut, measure it, make the rest of them the same. We go over to the second one. This is the mid-size parallelogram. You still have the same dimension as the first little one, 0.9133. You also have it on this side, of course. What happens here? It's just double whatever that is. That 0.9133 became 1.826 and 7. That's an extra decimal that just shows up. I don't worry about that. I work to three decimal points. So this number doubled will get you this. This is the third piece. It's a trapezoid. You notice you still have the same length on there, 0.9133. Same thing here, same thing there. This becomes double the same way that one became double. The difference between this piece 
is this is set up against my stop the full length. You flip this piece over, let this angle point touch that, and you'll cut the trapezoid and it should come out 1.8267 and the three little short sections should be the 0.9133. Here's the longest one. You'll need a few pieces here. Same thing, 0.9133, same as there. And guess what? This number is three times this number. So take three of the short sections, it makes exactly what you need right here. 2.74. So that's pretty much it. And again, make sure you use the dimension you've cut here. If you cut them exactly to 0 0.7910, then use these dimensions. If you don't, it's easy enough to create your own. I do recommend using uh, digital calipers to do this, but you can do it with a tape measure if you're accurate enough. And I've done them with a tape measure, but it's easier to do it with a digital caliper. So I think this should help out. I hope it did. And uh, I appreciate you sticking around to the end and seeing how this is done. So a lot of these ideas come from pictures of paintings, cutting boards, and other photos found on places like Google Images, Etsy, and other places. The photo of this was shared to me and I was not sure of the source until yesterday. Yesterday I found a new YouTube channel that has one video on it of an illusion. And it's not this illusion. But in the background I could see a turning that looked just like this one. Others have made this after seeing my version, but this is not one of them. I'm guessing this might be the original. All of these shapes do exist, but maybe not in this order. You might want to check out that channel. It's Donovan Julian. So I hope you enjoyed the process of making these types of turnings. The sky is the limit using these angles and shapes. Best of luck. See you later.